So should college, college athletes be paid? The, the idea of all this money being infused into college sports, you know, from March Madness to the media rights fees to the individual conferences, and these huge salaries that the coaches are receiving. So the Nick Saban numbers, you know, approaching, you know, 10, 10 11, 12 million dollars as, as time goes on. So just huge numbers going out there. And the question comes, should college athletes be paid? Not, not a new issue, certainly one that's been out there for a while, but there's real money there. And the, the same problems exist. And to be as clear as possible, there's, there's nothing wrong with, nothing illegal about it. And I don't think there's anything immoral about the idea. The, the, the problems come more with A, the complexity of doing it, and, and B, are there better uses for the money? So the complexity of doing it, two things that, that always strike me. First, the biggest, Title IX. Whatever you do for the men, you have to do for the women in terms of, of the, the amount of dollars that are distributed among the populations of the college and the opportunities that are provided. So, so that makes it difficult, number one, if you think about who do you want to pay, uh, people most often want to pay the, the stars of the basketball team, you know, the March Madness stars, or the stars of the football team. So that, that's one level of the problem is how do you do it, the mechanics of doing it. The next level of mechanic problem is how do you pay even the different members on a team? So if we take football, for example, uh, when I played at Stanford, there were, were star players like uh, Tony Hill, wide receiver, James Lofton, wide receiver, some quarterbacks. And then there was me, the third string offensive lineman. How do you make the determination about how much money goes to who? A lot of people just say, let the market determine and maybe there are negotiations that take place, uh, but do you start having agents at this early time? While you're in college, you get an agent to negotiate what you're gonna receive as a, as a sophomore in college. So, so these are the difficulties that come into play. So in my mind, nothing wrong with it. And, and certainly if we look to things that are being done, uh, paying student athletes the actual cost of attendance, which is more than they've traditionally gotten, Traditionally, it's just room, board, tuition, and educational fees. There wasn't money provided for the flights back and forth home. There wasn't money provided to go out on dates. Uh, and and it's if you think about it, I mean, you might say, well, they should get a job. There's no time for jobs. So they actually do need these additional funds. So the idea of getting, as is starting to happen now for the cost of attendance, several hundred dollars a month is something that, that makes some sense. To go beyond that, begins to be a little bit more difficult. But the question then becomes, uh, as that number gets bigger, what are the student athletes really gonna do with that money as it's provided to them? A lot of positive uses, uh, but do you begin to see some troubles occur as hundreds of dollars extra begin to flow into the hands of 18, 19, 20 year olds? So, so that's one of the issues we need to keep an eye on.